quality. In this video, I want to talk about DI boxes and why they are absolutely necessary in your sound reinforcement systems. So let's check it out. A DI box known as direct injection or direct box is used to capture audio signals from instrument without the use of a microphone. Now, this has the advantage of giving you a clean signal that is free from background noise or interference because the sound doesn't have to pass through the air first before it gets to your microphone. Now, there are different kinds of direct boxes and across various manufacturers and whether they are active or they are passive. I wouldn't go into all of that in this video. I just want to focus on what the functions of a direct bus are and when you need to use one. A DI box has four functions, connector matching, level matching, impedance matching, and signal balancing. Now the first two, um, connector matching and level matching, are not as important as the last two because with connector matching and level matching, you can achieve them using other equipment. But for impedance matching and signal balancing, these two are the reasons why you definitely need to use a DI box in your PA system. For some instruments, when you're using a DI box with them, you can actually uh, achieve all four of, four of these functions, but for other instruments, probably you're just achieving one or two. So let's jump into it in detail. Starting with connector matching, what that simply means is being able to connect the um, output of the instrument you're connecting to your PA system, like a keyboard, to the input of your mixing console or your stage box. So for some instruments, uh, most stage boxes or most uh, mixing consoles, they just have XLR connectors built into them. And you want to connect an instrument with a jack output, like a keyboard, to it. You can use a DI box for that. Um, DI box accepts um, jack connector as its input, although this one also has a XLR connector as its input as well. And then the output of a DI box is almost always an XLR mid connector. You can also achieve this same connector matching with um, a normal adapter. Uh, but if you have a DI box around, you can use it for it. Now let's talk about level matching. In my last video, I explained the different types of audio signal levels. And if you really need to understand what those audio signal level types are, you should check out that video. I've linked it in the description. Now, the output of a DI box is a microphone level signal. And this makes it convenient for connecting a DI box to mixing console, almost all mixing consoles and all stage boxes. So if you want to connect a line level signal or an instrument level signal, to the microphone input in your mixing console or in your stage box, then a DI box is your go-to because it brings down the level of the, the line level signal or the instrument level signal to a line level signal which is suitable for connecting to a microphone input. Um, if the signal is too hot, a DI box comes with a part switch where you can actually bring that signal level down a lot. For most high-end uh, DI boxes, like this one I have here, it has a minus 20 dB part and a minus 40 dB part. So you can even connect a speaker level signal which is very interesting so if you want to connect the output of a speaker or a power amp and get that signal to your mixing console you can use a di box for that that has a very high pad and bring down the signal down so it's very interesting that you can do that with the di box now let's get to some serious stuff the third function of a di box is impedance matching I find that a lot of people don't understand this and it tends to hurt their mix. Now, impedance in simple terms is the opposition to the flow of alternating current. You understand this, you remember the uh, basic electric circuit diagram. So you have a, volt a voltage source like a battery and then you have a closed loop um, circuit where you have a resistor somewhere in the middle. The impedance is like the resistor but for alternating current, which audio signals are. So, our mixers have inputs, the circuitry in our mixers have inputs, impedance, the input rather, and then the instruments we are trying to connect to the PA system, they have output impedances. And our goal is to match both, in both impedances have to match for you to get the best sound possible. The mixers have low impedance, the input of the mixer have low impedance, but some instruments have high impedance, especially passive instruments like a uh, bass guitar, electric guitar, or acoustic guitar that don't have uh, batteries inside, don't have onboard preamps. So those are high impedance instruments. And if you connect those instruments straight into those high impedance signals straight into a mixing console, which is that is expecting a low impedance signals, you get lots of information in your signal, especially high frequency information. So how a DI box is able to handle that is a DI box comes with a very high input impedance and a low output impedance. So the low output impedance of a DI box matches with the low input impedance of your mixing console and the high input impedance of your DI box matches with the higher output impedance of the instrument you are trying to connect to it. Now, if you connect a low impedance equipment 
to the input of the DI bus, you'll still be fine because it already has a higher put impedance and it can work fine with a low impedance. But if you are trying to connect a high impedance instrument to a low impedance uh, input, then you're going to have problem doing that. So a DI bus really helps in being able to convert the high output impedance of your instruments, like your bass guitar, for example, to a low impedance that suits what your mixer is built to handle. Finally, the fourth function of a DI box is signal balancing. Now, um, I have linked in the description a video on understanding balance and unbalanced audio signals. You might want to check it out if you want to know more about those. But a DI box is able to con convert an unbalanced signal to a balanced signal. What this does is to be able to help you um, you can then transfer that audio signal over long distances to where your mixing console is, assuming it's backstage all the way um, in the hall, without fear of losing um, signal quality and without noise and interference being introduced into the signal. Now let's address the question of when do I need to use a DI box. Number one, you can use a DI box to achieve any of the four functions I've listed. But you should definitely use the DI box for impedance matching and signal balancing. So with this, I always connect bass guitar, acoustic guitar, a lead guitar to the PA system using a DI box. That's if I'm going for a direct connection and not using a microphone. This enables me to convert the unbalanced high uh, impedance signal from these instruments to a balanced low impedance signal, which is suitable for my mixing console and enables, enables me to send these signals over long distances without noise. Basically, for every uh, input that outputs unbalanced signals, keyboards, uh, my music playback devices, drum machine, and what have you, I connect them through a DI box so that I can have clean signals that is free of noise and interference. Because when you have little noises from uh, all of your unbalanced connection, if you're noisy in a DI box, then it becomes amplified when you sum them together at the mixing console. The second situation where you need to use a DI box, apart from all I've mentioned so far, is when you're dealing with ground loops. Now, ground loops is a little bit difficult to explain without being too technical, but basically, if you have instruments that are being plugged to the power outlets, like your keyboards and whatnot, and um, you connect them to your PA system, to your mixer, for example, which is also plugged on the um, power outlet, Apart from the audio signal that flows through, there's another signal part because of the common ground that goes through. So the um, power that goes into your instrument like your keyboard is plugged to the outlet, which is connected to the earth of the building. And then also your mixing console, your amplifiers and all, all of those, your speakers are plugged to the same power outlet and then there is a common ground. So it creates a secondary electrical path. And that can cause, if there's a little bit of, um, the, there's a little bit of difference between the, the reference point or the ground, if that's the right way to say it. There's a potential difference that, that can be created and potential difference, difference simply means there's a voltage which will cause current to flow. Ground loop can be very serious and can even stop a, a, an entire event from happening because it can be very loud and be competing with your signal itself. So what we use for that, a DI bus is very important to be able to break that ground loop. You can easily break ground loop by taking out the earth or the ground connection from one of these inputs to break the loop, but that is very dangerous because you wouldn't have earth or ground protection on that equipment. And if there is a risk of, if there is a risk of electric shock on that particular equipment, then it's going to be an issue. So we use a DI bus for that so that we break the ground, not from the power uh, sockets, but from the um, the signal path. So a DI box achieves that. There's usually a ground lift switch in a DI box. This one has one, I don't know if you can see it here, ground lift. And um, once you engage that, it uses a transformer that is built into the DI box to be able to create um, a separation between, a physical separation. The signals can still flow through because of mutual inductance, the inductance in the transformer, but the physical connection is being broken and the ground loop goes away. For a follow-up video on types of DI boxes and which type to use for what situation, you can find that video right here. And for my series on connecting instruments to your PA system, you'll find it right here. Thank you for sticking around till the end of this video. I'm Kelvin. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.